If you have a sick bed of fish, you're probably feeling a little scared, confused, and anxious about how this happened. While relatively hardy fish, betta fish can suffer from parasitic, bacterial, and fungal diseases just like any other freshwater fish. Quick identification and treatment will minimize potential damage and get your colorful friends swimming happily again. The best way to keep your betta fish from getting sick is to keep them happy and healthy by following proper betta fish care. It's always better to be proactive than reactive. Just like you wouldn't want to be freezing or living in a dirty and cramped home, your betta fish doesn't either. That would eventually get you sick too. Sick betta fish behavior are lethargic, inactive, lazy, lacks aggression, hiding, refusal to eat for extended periods of time, for example days, faded colors, mainly in male betta's labored breathing, damaged fins, clamped fins, this certain behaviors are linked to a stressed or sick bed of fish and not necessarily a full-blown disease yet. Identifying these behaviors is the easiest way to tell if your bed of fish is sick. Noticing these behaviors and correcting the problems early is very important. Failure to do so could exacerbate the problem and lead to more severe complications. Bed of fish diseases Here are the most prevalent bed of diseases. Columnaries cotton wool or mouth fungus. Both beneficial and harmful, columnaries, bacteria is present in your bed as water. Under stressful habitat conditions, for example overcrowded, and unmaintained water, bacteria may enter through lacerations, the mouth or gills. Visible, sometimes stringy cottony patches on the mouth, gills, or fins along the body will be present in columnaries. Accelerated symptoms may also include visible lesions and gill damage. Symptoms, cottony white growths along the body and or gills. Cause, stress, poor water quality. Treatment, clean water and or antifungal medication. Dropsy pine coning dropsy can be caused by numerous issues including viral disease, parasites, poor nutrition, and bacteria. It's also common amongst keepers who feed their bed is live of food. Dropsy is actually not a disease, but rather the symptom of what's going on inside the bed of fish's body from other ailments. These ailments include fluid buildup and the swelling of failing organs, liver and kidney. Dropsy is severe and visible from above. You'll notice extreme swelling in the abdominal area and outward flaring scales that resemble a pine cone. The bacteria that triggered internal issues is contagious and can harm other community tank members. Another symptom of dropsy is the tendency for betta fish to stay close to the surface to easily get oxygen. Their appetite will also be virtually non-existent. Symptoms, extreme body swelling and pine coning of scales. Cause, virus, bacterial infection, or parasites. Treatment, canamycin sulfate, or, mracin 2. Hole and head usually caused by improper nutrition or habitat cleanliness. Early signs of hole-in-the-head disease include small sores, dents, or pinholes on the surface of the betta's head and above its eyes. Over time these holes become increasingly larger lesions. These cavities are easily visible and tend to travel along the lateral line of the betta. If diagnosed early, it can be cured like most betta fish diseases, but in later stages, it becomes increasingly deadly. Symptoms, visible holes above the eyes cause, poor nutrition and water quality. Treatment, clean water and proper betta fish food. Itch, if another one of the most common betta fish diseases is itch, and it's caused by parasites. Ick is characterized by small white dots that are similar in size to a granule of sugar. These spots are visible to the naked eye and appear along the body and fins of a betta fish. It's a very preventable and treatable disease that is, however, uncomfortable for your betta. You may notice them rubbing against objects in the tank in an attempt to get the parasites off their body. Symptoms, small wide dots on body and fins, rubbing on decor. Cause, poor water quality, stress, or contagious companions. Treatment, clean water and rid it plus, or, Mardell Copper Safe. Fin and tail rot Fin rot or tail rot, melt, is probably the most common betta fish disease. It's often confused with tail biting, resulting from boredom, and tears on sharp tank decor. Upon inspection, the tail, 
caudal, or other fins will show visible signs of the disease. These signs include red or black tattered, sometimes bloody, edges along the affected areas and can lead to body rot if not treated. Typical behavior and personality does not usually change unless the beta is suffering from other ailments too. And to answer your next question, yes their fins can grow back. Symptoms, black slash red tattered and receding fin edges. Cause, poor water quality. Treatment, clean water and aquarium salt administration. Severe cases require MRAS and 2 antibiotics, or Caniplex. Popeye this disease affects a bed of fish's eye and will cause one or both to bulge outwards. It can be very startling seeing these symptoms, but it is treatable. The most common cause of Popeye is prolonged exposure to poor water quality. If you monitor the quality of your betta's water and don't feed him or her liva food, you should never experience it. Popeye on its own can be cured without long-term damage or loss of sight, but sometimes it's a sign of tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is a more serious and always fatal betta disease. Symptoms, bulging eye. Cause, prolonged exposure to bad water quality or tuberculosis. Treatment, clean water and MRAS and 2 antibiotic or Caniplex. Swim bladder disorder The swim bladder is located between the stomach and the fish's tail. Overfeeding can lead to bloating, constipation, and swim bladder disorder from the digestive tract pressing towards the swim bladder. This is very common among bettas in captivity because of misinformation or lack of knowledge around how much to feed a betta fish. The instructions on the back of food containers can be misleading and usually represent an overestimation. SBD is not contagious and usually clears up on its own, unless it's a birth defect. This disorder is more prevalent in young fry and select breeds like the double tail beta. Symptoms include difficulty swimming, constantly being in an S-shape, changing depths, the inability to leave the surface of the water, laying on the bottom and the inability to swim horizontally. Symptoms, floating on side, difficulty swimming or regulating depth. Cause, genetics, overfeeding, or bacterial infection. Treatment, fasting 2-3 days. MRAS and 2 antibiotic. Velvet is a parasitic bed of fish disease that causes a goldish yellow or rust-like sprinkling of color on the betta's body, gills, fins, or all three. It's hard to diagnose and is best identified using a light source, like a flashlight, and shining it on the betta. Some betta fish exhibit marbling and unique coloring, so make sure you rule that out first. Betta fish are known to change colors over time as well. Bettas with velvet will dart around the tank looking for spots to rub themselves on, just like itch, in an attempt to get the parasites off. If left untreated, velvet can lead to death. Velvet is highly contagious to other community fish too, especially in sororities. Treat community tanks even if the other fish appear to be healthy and without signs of the disease, better safe than sorry. Velvet is caused by ongoing stressors, poor water conditions, and prolonged exposure to colder than tropical water temperatures. Symptoms, goldish yellow rust-like dusting. Cause, rubbing on decor. Stress cold and poor water quality. Treatment, clean water, 76-81 degrees Fahrenheit. Mardell Copper Safe. After diagnosis, you'll need to follow the treatment options right away and always strictly adhere to medication directions. Never stop treatment early as this could increase a parasite's immunity. If your bed of fish lives in solitude you may opt to treat them in their existing tank. If they live in a community tank, have carbon filters, or sensitive plants, you should quarantine them for disease treatment in a separate hospital tank. Some beta diseases can be treated easily, while others may have gloomier prognoses. Check your beta daily for anything abnormal. During feedings and tank cleanings is a great time to look for common symptoms of an ill beta. Learn your fish's personality too. Doing so allows you to quickly identify when they're acting strangely. It is not an exhaustive list of all potential diseases. The best way to deal with diseases and illnesses is to not get them in the first place. Be proactive instead of reactive. Quick identification and treatment will ensure you're providing the best care and chances for overcoming the problem. Healthy bettas are active, aggressive, 
and have big appetites. Seek better fish are the exact opposite. It's your responsibility to learn how to care for and provide a suitable habitat for your betta fish. With that said, diseases amongst betta fish can and do happen somewhat frequently. As bettas get older their immune systems weaken, making them even more susceptible to...